This is Air Brooklyn, your host Ben Piven. We're here with Ken Gua, the brains behind an amazing film project, Scam Republic. Thank you so much for having me here. It's like an honor to, to, to be featured on this program. And uh, so yeah, we can start from the top. This is a really fascinating initiative, a look at an industry scamming, a uh, part of West Africa that seems very integral in some senses to the economy of Nigeria. You did the filming in Cameroon. Let's get started. So what's up with Cameroon and scamming? Well, to be honest, the, the culture has kind of seeped into Cameroon as well. You mentioned Nigeria before, but it has taken over a lot of different facets of West African culture, Central African culture. You have not only Nigerian scammers, but they, they actually learned a lot of their scamming habits from people in Ghana and in the UK. So it, it's pretty much been something which has completely uh, taken over different pockets where people have not had an opportunity to find jobs. They've come in, they've realized that, listen, it's not necessarily the most, it's for sure not an honest way to make a living, but there are people who put their kids through university and college and life doing this kind of thing, and that's crazy in itself. For the most part, I got into it because I was in Nigeria, and I, uh, I went to a city called Calaba, and I happened to stop in this restaurant, and I'm noticing like there's a bunch of navigators outside and navigators in uh, a third world city alone says something that's a big statement to make you, you go outside you see someone very important is in here and I see these guys and they have like jewelry they have people around them and apparently you could tell you know that they come from some kind of wealth or they have a little bit of means and and then I hung around for a bit um, just because in the place that we were it's very when you go to a third world country, you know, um, exponentially, whatever wealth you have shows through because other people aren't necessarily gonna be able to eat in these same places or go to these same places. So being there and we're in the same quote unquote circles, it was just really interesting to, to find these guys and, and it took me a little bit of goading to, to get them to open up and talk about what they do. And it was like, okay, Nigerian scammers. And just from that experience and knowing a bunch of uh, filmmakers who who wanted to share their stories and share some unique tales. That's uh, pretty much how Scam Republic came about. So this was your introduction to the topic. Going to Nigeria was your first experience hands-on dealing with those folks. That was what whet your appetite and, and got you, pushed you down that road towards doing a film about scamming? Essentially, yeah. It uh, gave me a subject which I really wanted to explore further. Originally, I had gotten involved in film due to a friend of mine who happened to be a contestant on the 2014 Big Brother Africa. After he had gone and filmed uh, the series in Nairobi, it was just a natural progression. I was living in LA, I had met so many people who were interested in the arts, wanted to like have these interesting stories, and I thought for production value, production cost, I could do so much more within Africa than I could do in the States. And in the States, anyone can make a movie. But to be able to touch a subject like this within Africa, within my community, my other community, I should say, it was really, really cool. It was a great experience, and it helped me get a base. And I based a lot of this, oddly enough, on Bruce Lee, because I was a huge Bruce Lee fan growing up, and he never made it in America. If you look back at what he did, he went back to China, he made films there, and then he was able to like build something for himself and then come back around. And I think that as an independent artist, you know, that's the best way. Go back to your base, do what you need to do for your base, and then you can slowly, gradually go to uh, your new homeland. So you're originally from Cameroon, your family's Cameroonian. Why did you pick Cameroon to film the project when Cameroon and Nigeria are different sorts of places and you don't necessarily want Cameroonians to be associated with scamming? Absolutely. It's something that, you know, it's a very negative subject, but in the film I keep it neutral. Granted, if you were from Cameroon, you will know that what we're talking about, like just the name, Republic, is something that people within the country would call it. If you speak to a French African and you say, oh, I come from La Republique, La Republique is only one thing, it's only Cameroon. There's so many French-speaking countries. You can go to Senegal and say, oh, I'm from La Republique, they're not going to be like, where? No, they're going to know you're a Cameroonian. But uh, I, I also push it more for a Western audience because Scam Republic, it's just, 
It's a name. No one really is going to like associate that with anything. They're just going to have this generalized idea of, okay, it's somewhere in Africa where they're doing this. And granted, the film is in English and French. That occurs. But still, when people see that, they're just going to think, okay, maybe it's Congo. Maybe it's even Nigeria, despite the fact that it's French. You know, I, I uh, believe that there's a naivete to, to African culture um, in Western media. And I thought that that'd be kind of... Uh, cool to exploit film-wise. So before we talk about the place and the experience of filming, maybe just explain a little bit about the message of the film. What is the film? What audience are you trying to reach with the film? What is the story? Uh, what was sort of the genesis behind the tale? The story is about two guys in university, uh, one named Kwesi, the other one named Nico. They come from varied backgrounds. One of them is an immigrant to Cameroon, from within Africa. Uh, the from Ghana? No, 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 no. Kwesi, it sounds like a Ghanaian name. Yeah. You are good, you're good. No. <laughs> but actually, Kwesi, anywhere, like, it's never really stated where he comes from, but he's a foreigner to the country. So that in itself is a unique aspect of it because you don't necessarily see that in films where they have an African country and show immigrants within an African country because it occurs. So one is an immigrant. He really comes from very little means. He is brilliant when it comes to the sciences and the arts but as far as uh, home life he has uh, very little connection with 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 the home life he has an uncle who is the town drunk quote unquote and he's his only support system aside from that he really comes from nothing else Nico on the other hand um, never got a chance to uh, know his father but he's the other character uh, he's a Cameroonian uh, he lives with his mother cares for his mother and she plays an integral part in in the story and and what occurs and essentially they're just like two young guys trying to come of age in an African city which has very little to offer them and it's subtly subversive because if you watch it and you see this you're going to be like wow why don't they have means because of lack of opportunity why aren't they advancing because you have a guy who studies computer programming along with everyone else in the classroom, yet there are no co-working offices, there are no tech companies there. So what are they gonna do with that degree? They're gonna go mop bathrooms and clean and work at train stations and they have no opportunity. This, this is a place without the industrial revolution, without high foreign investment. So as a result, you do what you have to do. You have biomolecular engineers who clean bathrooms, honest truth, and this is something which we can all relate to, to worldwide, the immigrant struggle. Um, but on top of that, the film is just going to show Africa without being preachy and without being like, oh, look at the poor people and the flies. That's, that's really what I wanted to get across. It's just like, where is this place? And I found it very interesting because the clips and snippets I've shown people so far, it's just been like true art because I have one idea which I'm trying to convey and then someone else will see it a completely different way and I've just been astounded by that. I've just been like, wow, I never was trying to get that across but that's what you saw. I'm going to nod and smile. <laughs> you know? In terms of the genre and the way this film is made and produced, obviously in the U.S. it would be regarded as a foreign film. Would you say that it's drama? Some of it is a little bit documentary style in the sense that it's capturing this scammer world. How would you place the, the genre? I would say it is a drama, possibly even a dark comedy, because I think there's going to be moments in it where, I don't know, I was watching edits recently and I thought that some things are going to be funny. When people actually get into the scams, it's like, how could people actually fall for this? And you see that. And it's a drama for sure, but I think there's a little bit of humor behind it and the story that we tell and, and just the imagery alone is going to be something which is captivating because this is, like I said, something that my audience, the audience that I shot for, which was, though it was made in Cameroon, I had it with a Western audience in mind because I already knew I would have the Cameroonian audience. No one in Cameroon has ever shot a film of this magnitude with a crew and a cast from South America, from, from Angola, people who are coming in here and the United States has ever done anything this truly creative. Like you have like Nollywood, which has made a certain genre of film. But this is something else. This is art. This is 
not to say that, that is an art in itself, but this took a little bit of the aesthetic of, of making a film within Nigeria and kind of turned it on its axis and showed what it would be like if we all in the diaspora, Africa, Brazil, came together and made art, made something really cool, and I'm really proud of it. That's amazing, and it sounds like there's a lot of different influences that have gone into the making of this film. And, and I find it interesting that you mentioned Nollywood. I believe that's the third largest film industry in the world after Hollywood and Bollywood. Absolutely. Um, so with Nollywood, you know, we we're talking about Nigerians and the scamming industry. It turns out that this type of cinema is quite Nigerian in a sense. Did you find that you turned to other Nigerian films for cues for how to film um, what was going on there in your head there's this uh, director in Nigeria his name is Tico Benson no one I, I could say his name a million times I can go into Hollywood go somewhere and say Tico Benson but no one knows who he is yet he's made over I would say 10 million dollars making films making Nigerian films where they spend maybe a month on production, editing, shooting. And his production company is unbelievable, the kind of guerrilla films which they shoot. I mean, people with lack of means. The, the inspiration of like watching some of his clips, there's actually a, a video on Netflix now, um, which is a documentary on Nollywood, and I believe he's featured briefly in that, where they talk about how they would, you know, get the shot by any means necessary, where if you need to have a high-speed chase, you literally have a guy with belts because you don't have a harness strapped to the hood of a car just holding the camera. When, with technology becoming more accessible to people, even poor people, it's coming to a point now where the quality of films is greatly increasing and it's, it's just beautiful. And yeah, Tico Benson was for sure the one influence just because it was all about the shot. He, he had a Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin outlook where it's like, I might feel pain now, but I'm shooting this and it'll look amazing to someone else. You know, even Jackie Chan, it's like you do what you have to do to get the shot. Once you've got the shot, that's all that matters. So Ken, take us there to the ground, the scene of filming. It sounds like it was rather chaotic. There were some chase scenes, there were some issues with the authorities locally in Cameroon. What was it like? Take our viewers there to the experience on the ground in the capital of Cameroon where you were doing this uh, you brought together people from all over the place how chaotic was it how did you manage that explain this sort of scenario number one not everyone spoke the same language and we all were in a room together we had three Brazilians on our crew an Angolan he speaks Portuguese as well um, Americans who this was their first time in Africa not necessarily having an understanding and then you had local Cameroonians some who only spoke French others who only spoke English and you throw that into a house with three bedrooms and it's about maybe 12 13 people in a room roughly the size of an office on a regular basis talking about film trying to get things going you were so, putting the people up there they were staying there no, absolutely like honestly I, I that's what I learned from this experience if I do when I when I do another film we have to live together for that period for that month for that two months because it just makes things so cohesive your family when you make this film and then afterwards it's something else but during this process we have to be there because it just takes too long to go I need an actor to show up on set at this time you're here in the house already. It's not like you have to wait for someone. So I believe that if you're doing guerrilla film, you have to work together in a cohesive unit. And as a result of us not necessarily speaking the same languages, and I would say Felix Coloso, who uh, plays Questy in the film, did most of the translating because we were the only ones with the French, English, and Spanish who